Welcome back to the Intentional Mind Podcast. I'm your host, Ange Barnard, and today we're talking about a topic that I did not expect to talk about. Okay, y'all. So what I did was I wrote a bunch of notes for this episode, and I tried recording this episode at least 17 times. I am not even exaggerating with you, at least 17 times. And you would think that after like the first three times, I would have been like, okay, and you're trying to force this and you need to back off. But I didn't. I kept trying to force it. So then finally, I'm like, after the gazillion times, I sat down and I was like, okay, God, is there something else you want me to talk about? Like maybe this is not the topic for this week. And I felt this. I felt like God said this to me. It's like, yeah, Ange, this ain't rocket science. Um, look, look at what's been happening this week with your clients. You seen a commonality over here? Yeah. So talk about that. Talk about your stories. Like what happened when you got, when you were in those places and what you did with that and how it led to X, Y, Z thing. You got, you got a zillion stories. You can talk for days, right? That's what I want you to focus on. And I was like, okay, homeboy, I got you. So here I am sharing stories with you that help you when you get into that state, that lower energetic state as you're pursuing your dreams, right? As you're going after the things that you want, there is a point in time that you will feel self-doubt. You'll question if you're on the right path um, where you think like, maybe I'm being too unrealistic here. You know, maybe I need to like tone it down and be more realistic. Maybe you have to do something else that makes more sense. You'll start to do that to yourself. The mind will start to do that. Why? Because the mind doesn't know how. And it's really struggling with that. It's like, I don't know how this can happen. I don't know how. And it starts to get all controlly up in there. And it starts to be like, you know what? Maybe you need to back away. Maybe we need to grab that goalpost and we need to move it back closer to you. Right? Maybe you shouldn't reach that far. Maybe that's unrealistic. Like that's a word I often hear people say. And this is where I got to tell you one, that is a normal part of the process. So in fact, if you don't experience that, you probably ain't pay, playing big enough, okay? Straight up, if you do not experience that. Because you should be doing things that where it, your subconscious is like, whoa, this feels uncomfortable. This is not me. I don't know how this can be. That means you're up leveling. That's what's happening right there. Okay, so I got some stories for you where I'm going to tell you what I did when I got into that that space of doubt when I was like, I don't know how this is going to happen. So I'm going to tell you that story. And there's a formula there. I call it a recipe that led to, I feel like, my dream becoming a reality. And I think you can use this recipe in multiple situations or these steps or these ingredients or whatever you want to call it. You can use that in multiple situations, okay? So I'm going to tell you that story. It's actually a story that I told, one of the story stories. So if you were at the health coaching retreat that I spoke at this past weekend, holla, holla, thanks for coming to listen to the podcast. All right, so um, I'm going to tell that story, but I'm going to tell you another story that just happened recently that's relating to a story that I might have told a while ago. You may have heard it, but you're going to hear it in a different light this time, different ears on. Okay, so one of the things I do to make sure that I can keep my energy high in that dreaming state, because so often when you get into those lower energy levels, you don't even want to dream. You're like, you're just so trying to deal with reacting to what is that it's so hard for you to be like, oh, well, like if I, you know, if I envision my ideal life, like it's hard to get there. Why? It's two different energy levels. That's a higher energy to get yourself in that state of dreaming, envisioning, Whereas we're reacting, we're feeling at that lower state in our life. Like we're just trying to like get by. We're just trying to figure this thing out right now. It's hard for you to be in the dreamy state. So you got to think about doing things that help you, your brain go to that level because that's like the mode where you get to create, right? And if we're having so much stress in our lives and we're just trying to get by and it's so busy and stuff, we don't go into that higher energetic state of like dreaming of what could be, right? 
this is why so many people struggle with like the dreaming side or setting up goals. I see it all the time. I've taught workshops on this for quite a while now. And I see where people struggle with that dreamy part because they've been operating at this reactive part of life. And we can call ourselves out when we're there. We all know when we're there. If you're listening to the show right now, you know when you're there. You have that awareness or you wouldn't be here listening to the show. Okay, so this is what I do. The game that I always play is the wouldn't it be cool if game. You may have heard me talk about this. So my husband and I play this game, which I'm going to ask him to play because we're about to drive. I'm going to my favorite place tomorrow. Guess where I'm going? I'm going to Beaufort, South Carolina. Holla to my Beaufort, South Carolina peeps. You know, I love Beaufort, South Carolina. It has such a, a special place in my heart. But we're going out there um, for the Holiday Homes tour. Um, and we're going around to see all those lovely southern homes and just get to walk out there and just be by the water. And I just love it. I'm so excited. So anyways, why am I ranting about that? I forgot what my point was. Oh, this is my point. Because I'm about to go drive to this hotel so that we're closer to the airport in the morning. And uh, on the way to the hotel, guess what game we're going to be playing over here? We're going to be playing. Wouldn't it be cool if that's what we're going to be playing? And my husband doesn't know, but he's going to play along with me. I don't know if it's his favorite thing, but it's my favorite thing. So this is how it works, guys, is you straight up say this. Wouldn't it be cool if and then you fill in the blank? Wouldn't it be so cool? I like to add the word so in there. Wouldn't it be so cool if I... If I could wear X, Y, Z thing and I was so confident in it and you could see my abs. I don't know. I'm just making that up. Wouldn't it be so cool if I owned an Airbnb, like the cutest Airbnb where people would want to come visit and it had like I left little gifts for my guests there and it just really had this cozy vibe where people came. They could just relax and see the beautiful view. Wouldn't that be so cool? Like, so you see where I'm going with this, right? So you can fill in the blank. So a couple of years ago, my husband and I were playing this game. And he said, wouldn't it be so cool if we could move back to the Midwest and we could get a home near our family? And wouldn't it be cool if it was like on the lake, though? It was on a lake. And uh, wouldn't it be so cool if I could work um, in a practice where I just really felt connected to the people that I work with and I had a really cool team and would it be cool if I had a mentor that was just like a really skilled mentor where he could help me just learn how to do better surge help me with my surgical skills like he wanted like a specialist like someone was like hardcore skilled at this so he went into more detail about it and he's like you know but the reality of that ever happening because like realistically think about it and like if usually if you're gonna work with someone like that they don't do they really want to mentor you you know like they're busy doing their surgical things most of the time you have to pay the thousands of dollars to get in the same room with them and them to show you their surgeries and it's like continuing education that costs a lot like right so he started doing that stuff like man nah, that's not gonna happen and I was like well that's not the game the game is you just talking about wouldn't it be cool if xyz thing could happen not you saying it can't happen and acting like it's not realistic, like that's not even part of the game. Just play the game right, you know? So he went on, started going again down that path. He's like, okay, wouldn't that be cool? And wouldn't it be cool if we could live by our family and I could also fly down to South Carolina and we could like maybe have a place there and I could do some work there And they would pay for me to fly there and then I could go back and we could go back to Indiana, be close to our family. Wouldn't that be cool? And and Ian's actually very good about being really detailed about these things if you let him get into that space, especially if I coach him through it. Like I will say like, what does it look like? What does it sound like? What's the color? Like, And I try to get more detail as he's envisioning in his mind. And it can be really hard initially to play this game. Because especially if you feel like, oh, you've been feeling down. But I don't know, just the whole, wouldn't it be cool if? And when you start to ask yourself that question, stuff just starts to flow in. And just play with it. Just a game. So he was doing that, playing that game. And he went into all these details, right? And I, even in my mind, I even said, I was like, yeah, that ain't going to happen. Like, let's be real. You know, someone's going to hire, why would a dentist, like, 
why would another dentist owner of a practice hire you to work in Indiana and then also hire you to work in South Carolina? Like that makes no sense. You could have a dentist in each location, location, you know, it makes no sense. Right. And I was doing that too. I was like, yeah, that's not going to happen. But I still was like humoring and playing that game because all our minds do that. We're like, yeah, right. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. So you may have heard me tell the story already, but I'm going to tell you, I got some additional news for you. That's kind of fun from the story. So long story short, I always joke when I say that people are like, no, nothing's long story short with you. We know this. Okay. So anyways, but for real, long story short. Okay. So what happened was, is after we interviewed at all these different places, the last place that Ian didn't want to go to because he was like, they only have a part-time role. I want a full-time role. And I was like, opportunity. Everything's an opportunity. You already drove this far. You might as well go in, meet the person, make a new friend, see the practice, yada, yada, opportunity, opportunity. That's where my mind goes. So he went in and the guy's like, yeah, only have a part-time role, but I know someone who has a full-time role. And I think I think he lives in I think it's Beaufort, South Carolina or something like that. And we were like, what? You know, Ian's ears perked up like, wait, what? And he's like, yeah, he owns practices there. And then he also owns them in um, Indiana. And Ian comes. So I wasn't with him. So I was in the car. He comes out in the car and he tells me the story. And he was like, calm down as soon as he said it, because he knew that I was going to be crazy about it. I was like, what? Like, this is God, you know, like freaking out. And um, so he's like, I don't know anything yet. I don't even know if that guy, like he, he seemed unsure of the area. Like who knows, Ange? And I'm like, well, it's worth talking to him. So he ends up talking to the guy, long story short, saying this again. Um, the guy was like, yeah, I would, I want you to come, you know, work at my practice. The one that I just bought, actually a guy's retiring. He's really skilled in surgery um, but he agreed to be on for X amount of time to mentor the new person that's coming in. And Ian's like, wait, what? OK, so there's that mentor right there. Right. Mind you, people do spend a lot of money to be with this guy in the room for the weekend for continuing education. But this is Ian's personal mentor. There's that check mark, And then Ian brings up the whole wanting to spend time in Beaufort and stuff like that. And the guy um was like, oh, like, and I would love for you to come do my surgeries and be for maybe we can work something out where I can fly you out. You can do the surgeries and spend time with your family and then fly back home. And he was like, what? So that was written up in the contract too. What are the odds of that? What are the odds of that? Like no one can sit here and say like, oh, that's a coincidence. It's not a coincidence. That's nuts, right? So there, I have a gazillion stories about this. In fact, I'm not going to tell you the other story like I had initially planned because of time. Now I'm looking at the time. Um, but don't worry because that story will come back. But the point here, oh, I forgot to tell you the whole thing that, that sparked this thing. So yesterday, yesterday, guys, I was at home. We make dinner and all the things and then I get super lazy after dinner. I don't want to do anything. And then usually what happens is Ian wants to go for a walk like we do. And I have to convince myself since it's been cold and put snow pants on and all the things. This is the, the, the night, every night, I swear, lately. Um, so we were sitting. So I was kind of, I what I do is I kind of stall a little bit. And I act like I'm like cleaning and stuff because I'm like trying to stall the time. It's like st- so total sabotage when I know I'm going to go outside and walk anyways. But it's the cold. It's the cold. Uh, okay. I'm trying to work my mind around it. But anyhow, so Ian's sitting there and he's looking at the the paper. Well, it's a flyer that just came in the mail. And the flyer on the flyer is Ian. So it's the dental practice flyer, like they're marketing it. It's Ian and his mentor side by side. And it talks about how they're two skilled, you know, dental surgeons and yada, yada. And it was just their pictures side by side. And he's sitting there looking at it. And I took a picture of him and my cat's looking at it with him. And they're sitting there. And I took a picture because I was like, there's a dream come true right there. Here we are sitting in the house, that lake home. Here we are sitting here. You're looking at a flyer next to your mentor. We never knew how this was going to come to be. It started really with the game that we made up. We had no idea if that was even possible for us, but we did give energy to it. We still allowed ourselves to dream about it. And we didn't even know the how. 
In fact, God was the one who came up with the how through this process. But did we take intentional action? Yes, we did, because we actually had to drive from South Carolina to Indiana in one day. We were exhausted driving all the way in one little one drive, doing all the interviews. And this is the thing I that I feel like people don't often mention. So if you if I went back and I went by step by step, like how this became reality, it's the same ingredients that the other story that I was going to tell you that I'm not going to tell you anymore yet. That other story used the same steps, the same ingredients that led to an outcome that you're like, what? That's crazy. I can't believe that happened. One of the stories where you're like, there was no coincidence there. Like that's nuts, right? It's another one of those stories, same ingredients. This is what the ingredients was. Clarity of the vision. So you clarify the vision. You allow yourself to dream. Just allow yourself. And sometimes you need to play that game. Wouldn't it be cool if game for yourself? And if you're feeling low energy, play that game. Play that game with yourself. Write it out in a journal or something. So you clarify the vision. You take aligned action. So even though we didn't know how that would be, we were still taking action towards our dream. That's why we drove as far as we did. That's why we sought out opportunities, right? So we took aligned action. Um, the third thing is the, there's an acronym here. It's called, I say CART, C-A-R-T. Clarify your vision, aligned action. The R is recruit the people you need. You know, we talked a little bit about community earlier. Who, whatever vision you have on your heart, there's people that you need to help get you get there. There's people that you need to watch too and see how they act so you can become that kind of person too. It's just like when I talk about professional speaking, what do I got to do? I got to surround myself with professional speakers. I got to be around people that can teach me the ways of the land. I got to um, learn from them. I got to act like a professional speaker, right? So it's the recruit part. There's people that you need in your life that you don't have in your life right now that are, that are needed to help you get to where you want to go. Maybe that's the community. Maybe that's the coach. Maybe that's the friend that's going to hold you accountable. Whatever that is, there's people that you need. And then the T, this is the part that people don't talk about when it comes to bringing that vision into reality. It's the trust piece, the trust. Because the how, like I said, it's not up to you. And what happens through this process is sometimes we start going after the opportunity and we think the first thing is it. In fact, Ian was offered another role that he thought was it. Like he's like, oh, this is cool. And maybe it didn't check off all the other crazy vision he had, but he never thought that was going to come to be anyways. Like he wasn't even actually truly looking for that. Like he was just trying to move forward to be like, oh, I know I want to be closer to family. I know I want to practice. I want to fit in. He was kind of like downplaying it. What he did was he moved that goal back, you know? And this first opportunity came. We thought it was going to be a good fit and it wasn't working out. Like it was not lining up. And Ian was so frustrated about it. And I remember saying, um, you know, this is because God has a better plan for you, right? You know that. And he's like, eh, whatever, whatever. And I'm like, you know that. That's the only reason. And um, you get usually it's like when you the time starts getting, you start getting in a time crunch and you kind of need to know. That's usually when this happens. Why? Because this is when you're called to trust the most. Truly, when you're in those that, that little mix where it gets dark, real dark, and your time crunch there, trust the most. And that's what happened to him. He had to do that trust the most. And then that other opportunity ended opening up. Um, the So the timing of it was like he found out about it, but he was accepting another role and he had not talked to the other person yet. And it was just like this, you know, thing. And then when that other role seemed like it wasn't working out and he was starting to feel really down, this other opportunity showed up and you're like, thank you, God, because this is even better than I thought it would be. This is better than that other opportunity I thought I was going to accept. Right. You had a better plan for me. And I was just being called to trust you. And that happens all the time in my life, in my client's life, and where I know, like, now I don't even get really worried about it anymore. I start to, I find my energy dipping down and I'm like, okay, you know what you got to do, Ange? It's getting low again. Let's, let's go back. Let's clarify the vision. Let's align with it. Let's recruit the people that we need. Let's go back and take those steps. Let's trust 
again. And every time I'm even in that trust mode, I go back and I'm like, okay, time to clarify again, time to align action, time to recruit. And it's like, you got to keep repeating like this process, it feels like, but the trust is a part of it all the time, all the time. And like I said, I don't even get worried about it anymore. I really don't. When, when stuff like this, it's not working out the way I wanted to. I'm like, okay, I got, I know God's got me. It's a better plan, better story for me to tell. Right. And I just wanted to remind you of that. I know I didn't get to my second story yet, but don't worry. It's coming on some other podcast episode. Don't you worry. But I hope from this one that you got a lot from this episode. And I know I'm kind of rambly, but you know me. You keep showing up and listening. This is how I do. This is how I do. But it's still helpful to you. And I really think about it as I was telling one of my clients today, I have like I have the world's best clients. I just have to say that hands down hands down. Like I literally jump around in my kitchen and I tell myself like and Ian that every day. Like I'm like, I love my clients so much. And I really do. I feel like I can be my true self. Thank you so much for letting me be my true self. Like I really feel if you're listening to the show, like you've truly accepted me as who I am or you wouldn't be listening to this. And I want you to know if you are a client of mine or if you will be in the future or I get to just have the blessing of meeting you someday, maybe at my event that's coming up, more details to come. But anyways, um, if I get that opportunity, I want you to know that I want you to just be yourself too, always. And I feel like when I talk to my clients, it's like we can be total scrubs in our sweatpants, hot mess express, most time it's me that's like that, Um, and we can just like keep it real with each other and talk about the hard stuff and move forward on our dreams together. And I can be there for that support. So anyways, I'm grateful for that is what I'm trying to say. So in a nutshell, honey, I have one final message. Ian's opening the door right now. Um, I got to recap like I always do. Recap. Recap back to the fact that if you are in a state where you feel like you're doubting or you feel like you kind of want to pull the goalpost back and you're like, am I being unrealistic or any of that stuff is showing up for you? I want to remind you again that the same God, universe, all the things that has helped some of my visions come true and all those crazy stories that you have heard come true is the same God that loves you just as much. And that there's a process to this. And if you're being called to trust, if you're feeling that. So remember the whole acronym, CART, is if you get into that state, you're doubting. First, you do the whole clarify, clarify your vision. And you can just start with just like the whole game, wouldn't it be cool if, and start to fill in the blanks. And then you take aligned action. And then you recruit the community, the other people that you need that can help you. You recruit them, the coach, the friend, the accountability, all that stuff that you need. And then you trust again. And then you trust and trust and trust again, more and more and more. Like that's how the process works. So I hope you enjoyed this episode and that you have an awesome day. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.